All right, welcome back. We're about to get going. Top of the turn. Hopefully, coffee is back from break. Uh, let's go ahead and put the map back on so everybody can see where we're at. Um, there's currently the top of the turn. The disc has made it all the way to uh, the top of the tower, so you can see it at the top. Um, and you guys are down at the bottom just hearing whatever's going on but not being able to do too much. So coffee you are up. What shall you do? I am going to open a whisper link with uh, Finn and uh, ask him if he's okay and to respond. I will keep the uh, message open to respond if he needs us. Yeah, so that's like a whisper he hears inside his head and he's able to whisper back to you and you hear it? Correct. Yeah, and this is a form of communication you guys have used before, so you recognize it, Finn, uh, when you hear him talk in your head. Um, that brings us to the dwarf's turn. We're at the top. Um, so let's move our players to that area. I'm going to move your tokens. You're going to want to scroll uh, Ardreth and... Finn, you're going to scroll up to the second floor area so you can see what's going on upstairs. Um, that is a giant bed. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's, we'll get to that in just a second. The dwarves get to go just as you're arriving. Um, they try to lunge past... Zephros here. Zephros is standing in front, and he's just trying to kind of block them with his hands and push them back. Um, that nobody seems to appear to be wounded or anything, but he's trying to stand in front, and they are trying to swing and hit a giant globe that is behind him. Uh, where are they at? Where's my alliance dwarves? There they are. Let's make a couple attacks. So they're trying to dodge past him and then hit the hit a sphere, and he's basically trying to stop them. Um, but two of them are able to hit the sphere as they kind of like one jukes one way, and and as Zephros tries to stop him, the other one hits the 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 globe, and then he tries to push back the other way. He keeps one of them from hitting it, but as two of these battle axes ring out and hit this globe again, you feel the entire tower shudder again, even more violently. Um, this time, and that is their turn. And that brings us to Ardreth. So as you reach the top here, Ardreth, uh, let me get to the second floor and ex describe it to you a little bit. Um, so this one, about 80 feet above you further up is the ceiling. Um, it has slender windows set with panes of stained glass around um, kind of near the bed and where the globe is. Um, you see furnishings include a giant sized bed and an enormous wooden chest sitting next to it. You see stone shelves that protrude from the walls at heights of 20, 40, and 60 feet. And these shelves bear the weight of a vast collection of um, books and journals. Floating 10 feet above the floor, you see a orb that Zephros is trying to keep these dwarves from. Um, and that is what you see on the second floor. It's obviously that as you're looking up that the next, the, it would be at the very top of the tower. And that is the area where the griffins are. You can even see some of their nest pieces that overhang from up there. So there's just one more floor above. Um, and that is the second floor. All right. So the three dwarfs are going for the orb. Um, I will yell in Dwarvish to halt the stupid actions. And you hear Zephyr say, yes, yes, listen, listen to our, our elven bard. Are, are you elven or half elven? Half elf. Half elven. So he, he uh, listen to our half elf bard. Please stop hitting the orb. And he's he's just trying to keep his body in between them. 
Um, he's not trying to hurt them in any way. And they have not seemed to... You don't see any wounds on him yet either. And this character here turns to address you and says, <clears throat> Do not interfere with our mission. Um, and I'll respond, What is your mission? And... He, and uh, and you go ahead and give me a perception check real quick. You realize you're talking to a female dwarf. Okay. And from she says to I... you, yeah, yeah, from the, the length Honest of the beard. Um, and she says, we're from the Lord's Alliance and we're here to disable this tower. Stand aside, half-elf. Uh, that's half human to you, is what I respond back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you do realize if you disable the tower, we all go down with it, right? Our mission is to disable this navigation orb. We're in no danger if we do so. <laughs> the rest of us are, though. Um, and that's about as much as you get out in a six-second span. Okay. So any other actions besides the talking? You still can do all your normal stuff. Um, I will... I guess I can't talk anymore. So at this point, I will... I'm going to get myself away from these three. And this the orb fills the hole, right? So there's no gaping space around us. Th this is the, the orb right here. Sorry, the platform. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's no space. It's it's uh, perfectly the same size as the hole. I'll move over to this spot here. Okay. And hold my action. If that dwarf moves towards me to attack, I will strike. Okay. She turns to keep it so that you're not right at her back, but she's not attacked you. Okay. Um... Okay, so Zephros is up. So he, again, pleads with them, Please, listen to my friends. They speak the truth. Why are you attacking my tower? And uh, the, the female dwarf, who appears to be the leader, says again, um, Our mission is to disable these cloud giant fortresses that keep attacking the north. We're here, and you will not keep us from our mission. Too many lives are at stake. And uh, Zephyros continues to try to keep his body in between um, these dwarves in the, in the navigation orb. Um, so he's basically trying to body check them away as they maneuver or lunge or try to get around him. That'll bring us to Ian. You can hear the conversation upstairs. It's pretty loud. Everybody's shouting at each other. Um, you were down on the lower level. Um, I'm assuming they just wouldn't hear me, right? You could yell, but they're probably pretty focused on the people that are upstairs at the moment. I mean, we would do a perception check to see if they hear what, what you're going to say. But you can try. You can certainly try. Or you could um, do some pixie dust. You know you want to. But the hole's plugged up now. We can't go through there. Right? Yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> we can go on the outside, yeah. Escape plan. Um, shit, I forgot what I was going to do. Um, plan B. For, B for bad. B for bad. Well, but, oh, I was going to tell... I, look, I see the look of concentration on... Coffee's face, and it sort of reminds me of Tigre's when we were doing that that endeavor into the cave. So I figure he's talking to somebody, and seeing that Greybeard still hasn't shut up, and Jarl is still looking very pale and a little bit sick. I assume it's neither of them, so it has to be either Ardreth or Finn. So I look at um, at Coffee, and I say. Uh, to tell Finn to tell them 
that this cloud giant is trying to save the fucking world, as crazy as that sounds. Maybe that'll stop them long enough before we go plummeting into the ground. And I, uh, and I go to just, I just put my hand on the leg of the, of the table, sort of just to feel like some sort of comfort. Uh, even though if we go plummeting down a thousand feet, it's not going to do anything, but it makes me feel better. So I'm just like, I have just a hand against it. Um, as I tell Finn this. No, not Finn, coffee. Okay. And that's, uh, and I, I just give us a little bit of space so we're not all crowded next to each other case somebody does decide to come in and do an AOE attack on us. <laughs> I can't reach that okay. low. <laughs> so we'll move to That's Greybeard's it. turn and he, he yells up to Finn and Zephros to come on, send the send the disc back down so I can get up there. S- stupid coffee won't let me fly. Um, and that is his turn. Uh, Finn, you are up at the top of the t- second floor. This is the one that's been talking and seems to be the leader of the group. The one I'm pinging. And I'm not hearing you if you're talking. I see you lighting up, but I'm not hearing you. Is anybody else hearing them? Am I the only one not? Nope. I don't hear him either. He did say to hold on, though. Just typed it in chat. All right, give him a second. Can I say I kick gray, gray beard? Like I just lightly kick them to tell them to knock it off. I like. I just got a message from Graybeard who says he says hold on in chat. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He must have did something to his headset on the other side. <clears throat> All right. Well, we'll do some more conversation with uh, Ardreth and the leader here while we're waiting for Logan to fix his voice. Oh, can you hear me now? There you go. You're up. Oh my God! I'm super annoying. I have no idea what happened. All right. I move off the platform to that position. I'm going to talk across both of these dwarves, and I'm going to say, we have just come from Nightstone. This giant is innocent of whatever you're accusing them of, and we will stop you from harming him or his property. And I will attempt to persuade them, if at all possible, in that uh, yeah. in that speech. Let's use a, a persuasion check. See how effective you are. Nails it. Oh, sweet. Nice. So, yeah, um, the the female dwarf here begins, it, it's kind of thinking, you can see the wheels kind of turning behind her eyes, the idea that, well, wait a minute, you're elven, half-elven, they saw a dwarf down there. Um, this cloud giant hasn't hurt anybody yet, has only tried to stop them. And she does think that's kind of strange because, uh, and she, she looks to you and says, and she tells her companions, um, she says, let's hear them out. Go ahead and put your weapons away. And th- these two dwarves, they kind of move to side by side, but they put their battle axes away and she moves here to address you. And she, and she looks at the, uh, the cloud giant says, um, all right, I'm willing to listen, but you need to release my team. And uh, Zephros looks at her, and he's really earnest, and he's, he's trying to kind of keep the peace. So he releases these three from the mass suggestion that they're under. 
and they they kind of shake free but they they have their weapons still out but they're not moving they're just waiting to see what their leader says and uh the leader kind of walks up to you and says we've already disabled three of these fortresses that have been dropping rocks and killing hundreds of people destroying several villages in the north and we're on a mission to stop any of these cloud giant fortresses that we see. How can you tell me that this isn't this wasn't part of it? And you see, Zephros has a really um, guilty look on his face as far as um, he doesn't know why his people are attacking the small folk. It's not something that he does. He, um, you know, he's trying to help you guys, and he's pained to hear that his brethren or some of his brethren are out there causing this problem or causing this destruction and causing this loss of life. Tell her. Look at his face. It's clear as the clear as the day that this giant has done no harm to anyone. And and she she looks at him and and she can tell um, let's do an insight check with her. Let's see how well she reads him. Um, and how about this? I'll give you my word as a paladin of the light that this this giant has done no wrong. Yeah, she got a she got a good read on him. Okay, um, and she yeah she's looking at him and she's she puts her weapons away and she's looking at him and she's like, well, "We're given a mission. We don't normally just not do our mission." And then you hear her. She see her look up, and you hear the dragon land on the roof again and his head kind of pokes down through and she's staring at him obviously in some type of communication and the and the dragon has stopped doing whatever he was doing and they seem to be having a quick conversation between the two and then she turns back to you and she says are you sure this tower has not dropped boulders on any of the settlements of the north and she looks at you I'm going to do a quick insight check on uh, Zephyros myself. Yeah, you. I mean, he, you could tell he, he has a, a pained look on his face, but it's not from guilt of like, yeah, he's out marauding or anything. He's He is um, devastated to hear that there are cloud giants out there harming small folk. I will tell, tell her that. I will say just because he is a giant does not mean he is evil. All of our people have have evil evil amongst our race i cannot call all humans my friend and i cannot call all dwarves my friend but i will call this giant my friend and she and she again she looks up to uh um the dragon and the dragon kind of in a very loud and deep voice says he speaks the truth and he hides no lies. And he begins to talk to Zephros, the dragon himself, and says to Zephros, "Tell me, you have not attacked any of the any of the um, settlements of the north." And Zephros looks at the dragon and he and he kind of says in his old voice, um, "I would never attack the the small folk. This these lands are your lands. These now, I am only here to help them." And uh, you see the dragon kind of nod, and also he says to the female dwarf, "He hides. He hides behind no lies. He has not attacked anything in the north." And uh, these three down here, they sheath their weapons, and they move to their kind of group here. And uh, she kind of holds her. She puts her, her her stuff's already put away. She holds her hand out to shake your hand, Finn, and she introduces herself as. Uh, Diana Ungart, leader of the strike group from the Lord's Alliance, sent by Queen Dagnavid herself to stop any of the uh, cloud giant fortresses that are attacking in the north. I will reach my hand out and shake her hand. She says, with these dire times, we have to do what we have to do. Um, but the dragon says that 
neither you nor him are lying. So we will take this word back to um, our queen and let her know that there is a friendly cloud giant fortress among the skies in the north. But that doesn't mean we won't stop any of the others. And uh, Zephros kind of looks to her and says, I will do everything I can to stop my brethren um, from harming the small folk also. You can count on me for that. Um, so at that point, um, Zephros goes back to the sphere and he begins to, he's casting some type of spell because there's damage to the navigation sphere. And uh, the dwarf says, uh, kind of looks up to the dragon and says, well, we're going to go back down. Um, we're going to stay here for just a little while if you want to pick us up and then we'll be heading back. And the dragon says, um, kind of gives a nod kind of flaps its wings in a, in a great um, gushing of wind and then you see it move from kind of its head was kind of coming down from the the 20 foot circle in the roof and you hear it flap you see it through the windows as it dives down and then it lands outside on the cloud to await the dwarves and now sits out outside of the entrance um, and then uh, Zephyrus finishes his mending spell to fix the navigation orb and he says please everybody stand on the disc and I'll bring you back down to the first level and then we'll bring everybody down to the first level meanwhile Greybeard is just yelling at everyone to get him up there I think we need to have an intervention for Greybeard yeah, he had the problem. I think so. <laughs> Just needs some spice to take the edge off. All right, so we'll put Zephros back at his chair. We'll put the dwarves over here on the side. And you can see it's a mixture of male and female dwarves. They're all kitted out in the same type of armor. They're obviously, you know, a strike group. Uh, this is their leader who you guys were talking to. We'll say you guys are kind of over here. Can we ask her for more news of the north since we're heading to Trimore? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so she kind of mentions that um, her team has already taken out um, three other Claw Giant fortresses that have been floating around. Um, they've destroyed the navigation orbs, and it'll take those Cloud Giants a while to go ahead and um, fix those, and they're deciding how they're going to um, deal with those. They appear to be attacking certain settlements, but they don't know, they haven't been able to figure out the pattern. Um, and so they're, they just have a general standing order that if they get any word of a floating fortress, that they're to bring the strike team in and disable it, and then they, they take off. And the, the dragon Clarion, is the name of the dragon, has um, owes the queen um, a favor and has volunteered to deliver the strike team when needed. Have they taken anything from these settlements that have been attacked? Um, they're not sure. They, she has only dealt with the fortresses themselves. The Cloud Giants um, obviously try to defend the towers, but they haven't had any interaction. Once they've disabled them, they've then they've escaped again. They don't stay and fight. Um, they're typically a lot bigger fortresses than this is. They were surprised by how small that this was just a tower. Um, and Zephyros kind of nods as he says that, that you, know, you don't see very many cloud giant wizards towers. Normally it's more of like a floating city or a floating fortress. They're much bigger and there's a lot more cloud giants in them. But they usually keep to themselves to the north and they don't deal with any of the um, the settlements, but since the breaking of the, the ordning, um, there are obviously those who believe um, that they should be out proving to their gods uh, where their place in the world is. And there's arguments between the giants. Even Zephros gives this information, you know, on how to do that. Some, you know, like he, he's, he has a different opinion of what should be done about the ordning versus, you know, some other faction of cloud giant that has a different opinion of what should be done. So there's a lot of turmoil even within the races of the giants. Plus, 
you know, there's still a lot of raiding going on. And even Diana can attest to that, that not only are there cloud giants raiding towns and villages, um, but there's been reports of fire giants, stone giants, hill giants, giants of all kinds coming down from the mountains, coming from their lairs, leaving the places that they've seen and attacking different settlements and areas um, all over the north. The north is being besieged mostly by giants at the moment. Are the, are the giants mostly in the north? Is that where they've been hiding? That's where they've kind of, a lot of them have been since the Ordning was struck. Um, th their kingdom, Zephyros kind of gives you a little information that you guys live in what used to be the giant's kingdom. This whole area used to be ran by the giants and controlled by the giants, but there was a great war between the giants and the dragons. And the time of the giants had kind of passed and their kingdoms have kind of passed, and they have moved further north into smaller settlements and have left this southern area to the smaller folk who have kind of claimed it and now have their, um, you know, cities and empires and, and factions and countries and, and things as it's it's their turn. It's kind of been in their minds that it's it's been their lands, even though there are still there. There's evil giants just as well as there's good giants. There's neutral giants. There's you know just the same as there are like Finn was saying with humans and dwarves and elves. There's good. There's bad. There's neutral and of all kinds and all factions. So it's no different than any other society. And is the Lords Alliance the only group that's sorry? Are they the only group that's that's working towards getting rid of these giants? Um, Diana says to you, no. I'm sure there are other factions that are working to um, get a handle on what's going on. All of this has been happening probably in a, in a two or three week time, and it's all happened fast. And everybody's just now learning about it. Um, it's a pretty recent thing, so nobody has any real idea of how to stop it. What's gonna, what it's gonna take to stop it? It's not like armies have been raised and they're gonna, you know, charge the north or anything. Everybody's still reeling from the attacks of the giants, so they're just doing what they can. You know, their faction is trying to stop some of these cloud giant attacks. Um, there are other factions um, that are doing other things in different ways. Though she doesn't know the details of them. So no news of Tribor directly? Um, yeah, she doesn't say anything that she's heard anything happen to Tribor. Excellent. Is Perhaps. there anything we should be looking out for? Sorry. I could say Perhaps the Pharaoh should not uh, go north with us. Yeah, he was. He's beginning to think that he he only wants to get about um, within a day's travel for you guys, maybe a two day travel of Tribor, and then drop you off. Not try to like just bring you straight to the Tribor town. I think that's fine. Yeah, I'd hate for him to get into any more trouble on our account okay um so the 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 dwarves after you know taking a, a, a quick rest and then having the conversation with you guys begin to pack their put all their stuff back in their packs check all their stuff and they start to head out towards the dragon uh what any again? diana what diana ungart u-n-g-a-r-t mm -hmm. Yep, and they begin to file out. And she'll be the last one to leave. Any last questions or discussion with Diana? If we if we were to sort of like learn anything about these giants or need help with giants or wish to help with these giants, is there anyone you would recommend us to go visit? 
Um, that is a great question. Let me bring up one thing. Or, you know, if you have any, like, giant experts that you might know, that'd be nice. <laughs> any spoilers, anything. Um, she... Let's see. It's the typical, if we ever need help, who, who can we call? Yeah. She says... Just in case we have a big need. Yeah, just, just in case it happens. I mean, I doubt it'll happen. She gives you the name of... Um, uh, there's a merchant. She says that uh, runs the lion's share in Tribor. Uh, that if you want to pass any information on to the Lord's Alliance, you can speak to her. And her name is Alestra Olgar. A-L-A-E-S-T-R-A. -A -E Olgar. U-L-G-A-R. And she's a Aluskan human. So if you have any information or if you feel... Um, you want to pass something on or, or you need to contact her again, send a message to that person. That person can send a message to the Lord's Alliance and it will get to Diana. Where, where was she at? She's in Tribor and she's in the Lion's Share. Um, she runs the Lion's Share, which is the Lion Shield Coster. They call it the Lion's Share. It's kind of like a adventurer's outfitting um, merchant. And she she bows. Um, she winks at Greybeard on the way out, and then uh, heads out. And then they all uh, the the dragon grabs the dwarves within the claws. They all ride on the claws. They have these uh, leather straps that strap them to the um, to the claws of the dragon. And the dragon you hear the wings of the dragon swoosh, and they take off back to the west and head out. Yeah, no problem. Don't let the curtain hit you when Mora didn't split you. <laughs> oh, when he's not craving the pixie dust, his voice sounds so different. So different. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so an eventful day. It is moving into the evening. Um... And Zephyros thinks he, he gets the uh, tower moving again. He's going to move through the night. And he believes if he travels through the night, he's going to be able to drop you guys off about two days from Tribor. And then you'll just be a two-day walk to Tribor from there. That's fine. Hey, he said one day. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's worried about scaring the, the small folk any further at this point. Or being attacked once again. All right, so let's clear out our turn order, and we can get rid of that. We're out of combat. All right, uh, anything you guys want to do for uh, the final evening uh, with Zephyros before the next morning? No, I think we've gotten all the information he's ever going to give us out of him. I think I use the time to practice playing some music and get a good night's sleep. All right. If anybody uh, else? Graybeard or anybody else wants to work on some tactics, I can. I will be happy to practice with them. Otherwise, I will sing along with Ardorth. Charles is going to put himself against one of the legs of the table and try and get into a trance so that he just wakes up when they arrive and every so often when he's about to go to sleep I go, Jarl, come sing with us <laughs> what a cunt that's amazing before uh, before you start doing your music-y stuff 
or after, I, it doesn't matter when, um, I go over to our dress and I take out the the beak trophy I've been working on. And I hold it in my hand and I say, where, where I come from, from my village, whenever we overcome a great obstacle, whether it's having to defeat a, a beast to join the guards or to move up in rank or we survive an attack, um, it is a custom to, to take a trophy from the dead beast um, to keep with us, to remember the strength and the bravery and courage it took to overcome such an obstacle. And uh, because you're not practiced in such arts, um, I decided, and because you were killed, I took it upon myself to, before they threw off these giant vultures, to uh, take off the beak, and I hand them the beak that has a chain on it uh, from the the giant vultures, and it's as a remembrance to the, I guess just, not, not to say obstacles again, but the obstacles you have overcome, and for the many that are yet to come. Well, thank you. That's truly appreciated, and I'll I'll take the gift and put it on. And I. Uh, but you can tell Ardruth is kind of uncomfortable at that moment. I mean, like sentiments shared. <laughs> uh, Ian gives a uh, a sort of like a firm nod, and goes off to one of the opposite walls from where the group is and just like sits there and observes what's happening and eventually goes into a trance for the rest of the night. Ah, oh, cool. Go ahead and write down uh, inspiration if you didn't have it. That was good. I like that. All right. Uh, Graybeard and Coffee, the only two I haven't heard about what you're going to do if you wanted to do anything before we move to the next day. First off, I asked Zephros, hey, where's the privy in this place? <laughs> and I yell, just walk over to one of the edges. Yeah, yeah, he kind of says, well, over the edge, it, it should be fine. And he, and he has a little twinkle in his eyes as he, listens to, he looks at Ardreth and he says, but watch that first step, it's a doozy. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> and then Greybeard holds it for the rest of the trip. <laughs> Don't step in yellow cloud. What do you think I've been doing so far? <laughs> no, I'm. I'm or good. don't eat yellow I'll, cloud. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm good. I'll uh, I'll hang out and uh, enjoy the music or spar with Finn a bit. One of the locals down below says, "Damn, first rocks and now yellow rain." <laughs> Ouch! New new meaning to acid rain. All right, coffee. Anything for you? Nope, just chilling. All right. So uh, the night will pass uh, uneventfully. Um, you guys have had plenty of adventures here. Uh, the morning, actually the sun hasn't quite risen yet, but he's flown throughout the night. He gently wakes all of you up um, and brings you guys outside. And the sun hasn't quite risen yet, so it's still kind of a purpley sky. Um, it's going to be probably, the sun will rise probably in about a half hour maybe 45 minutes and as you guys come outside of the tower you can see that the tower cloud is sitting on the near the ground um, and the the cloud steps have formed and you are right next to um, the trail kind of a clearing near the trail of the road that heads north to Tribor um, and so he kind of brings all of you guys out to the I'll bring you out here and Charles the first down the stairs. Yeah, and he uh, <clears throat> he bows to all of you, and he and he thanks you profusely. He he vows to talk to his uh, cloud giant brethren and try to stop them from attacking um, as much as he can. And he'll gather together those cloud giants that he knows to be 
um, good to tr- to try to get them to stop. And he uh, apologizes once again um, as he looks at Ardreth uh, with a pained look because he, he still feels very guilty that Ardreth died um, while he was trying to help you, but in fact just ended up interfering. So, um, but he says, continue on your travel, stay true to your uh, your morals and your goals, and I'm sure we will meet again sometime in the future. And then there are stairs that lead back down to the path. And I, I tell Zephros that he should let go of any concerns for what occurred, that I owe him truly a debt of life and if he ever needs anything and I can be of assistance that I'll be there to help him yeah and you see a really um relieved kind of look he there's still guilt in the eyes but the idea that um you've offered a um some relieving of that guilt for him and uh and he has a smile on his face and he thanks you and he and um he watches as all of you kind of descend the stairs to the ground which are only probably the cloud is probably sitting on the ground so it's only about 30 feet thick so you you descend about 30 feet of cloud stairs to the ground so let's move us over to probably our map that's where i'll put everybody and we'll move our party icon once my map loads in. There we go. And you guys are probably about um, a day and a half or two days if you just are leisurely heading north on the road. And you are on the long road that heads to Tribor. <laughs> All right, g- give me a. Uh... Oh, that's really good. Um, yeah, yeah, you get it. All right. Um, so you guys are on the ground, and you see the cloud. The the cloud steps begin to dissolve. And then the cloud begins to rise again. And then you see it drift over the Sword Mountains heading west um, as it disappears into the sky and begins to move off. And you guys are now sitting on the road. Um, It is um, dawn is approaching. (laughs) And you begin to move north. Do we need a marching order, or are we close enough to a big city to worry about it, not worry about it? Um, well, you're still, depending on your pace, if, you, if you're just going to take a leisurely pace, it's two days. If you're going to push or press, you can do it in a day and a half, or if you're going to really try to press on, you can do it in a day if you want to kind of jog and walk, jog and walk, jog and walk. Depends on what you guys want to do. I'm all for jogging and walking. There's a sense of urgency now. Could be surrounded by giants for all we know. Yeah, Coffee, give me a D4 roll. 1D4. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, what, what is your typical order? Uh, Ian up, up at the front? Yep. How far How far forward? I'm about... How, what's my movement speed on this character? I'm about... Uh, I would say like a 30 feet, 30, 40 feet. Okay. So, and, and that's pretty common. So Ian is up at the front. Um, who's next in line? Are you guys walking double, triple, I'll, I'll go up front with her as well. I'm towards the back as usual. Okay. I'll stay next to the Greybeard. Ambling along somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, so you're, you're not going to be with the group then? Um... Jarl. Yeah. I'm it seems like she's kind of scouting ahead. Um, yeah, I'll be scouting as well. 
We can't even see in the light, I say to the to the dwarf. And not the dwarf, I say to you. Um, Jarl, in character. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't even see during the day. It, uh, it turns out I, uh... Things have changed. You got that strip of fabric over your eyes now. <laughs> yeah, right. He's learned it's all been in his head this whole time. Yeah, it's all been in his I head. All right, so you guys are walking along. Anybody, yeah, um, and yeah, uh, coffee. About three hours down the road is when you realize that pouch is gone, and and obviously somewhere along the line in the last night or uh, at some point during the day, Graybeard, uh, somebody has taken the <laughs> the pouch from you. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly who's <laughs> I hear a bus. <laughs> it's the dwarf uh, floating next to you. Along the path. <laughs> His whole beard is just covered in dust. <laughs> you're not supposed like, to snort it. You're a junkie. I get my fly spell. <laughs> so you want to fly, dwarf? <laughs> um, all right, so you guys travel along. Uh, day passes. Um, you have nothing happens, so you make camp on the road to the side, yeah. Okay, did so, we see any small game while we were going along? Not near the road. Um, this is a pretty well traveled, you'd have to get off a little ways to probably try to find some, some type of creatures. Can I kind of skirt the trail then as we're going along off to one side and look for some game for dinner? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and give me a okay. survival check. Let's see if you capture anything. Yeah, you're able to, maybe you're able to pick off a rabbit or two um, as you leave the site, you know, the, the group, and you get a little ways off. You're probably 500, 600 yards from the road. You can probably still see them just barely, but you're able to pick off a few small rodent creatures, you know, rabbit-type creatures in the fields to the sides of the road, and you're able to bring them back. Okay. And when we settle in, I'll start skinning them up and cooking them. Of course, Jarl's a vegetarian, so he won't want any of this, right? <laughs> All monks, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's not a vegetarian. And he's a drow, too, so it's just mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take our second break uh, for the evening, and then we'll come back, which will bring us one day within reach of Tribor next town that we're going to enter so go ahead and stay tuned we got another hour to go and then we will call this adventure good for tonight so stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> 